school lunch. We've all experienced it. I've been through it. You've been through it. Your parents and their parents have been through it. Over 31 million kids each day participate in the National School Lunch Program according to Thrive's article, A Weight of a Nation. That's just shy of 1 billion lunches served each month. That's a lot of kids eating a lot of food. But is it the same food all over? The National School Lunch Program is a federally assisted meal program which was established under the National School Lunch Act and signed by President Harry Truman in 1946. But has this program meant that we have to sacrifice nutrition? And what is it that our children are consuming each day? Who's to say what they can and can't eat? We talked to many dietitians and nutritionists throughout San Diego, California, and Muskegon, Michigan to see what is going on from both sides of the nation. I've actually been really privileged to be a part of the changes over the last four years. I would say more so than anything, the wellness policies were really a big push for all of the county. And one of the things we noticed was that some of the school districts were more they were further along than others as it relates to their policies and there were other school districts that had policies in place but weren't necessarily being enforced. And so the biggest change I saw is that everyone understands now the need to be able to have a, a solid wellness policy and one that um, also incorporates and, and involves enforcement because that's the big issue that we see right now. Since 2006 when Congress set the standards for school lunches that received federal funding, school nutrition has improved. The National School Lunch Program, which provides low-cost and free lunches to low-income students across the nation, has been instrumental in bringing nutritional education to children that ordinarily would not have healthy options available to them. Many school children do not have any other access to fresh produce or unprocessed foods, and no way of learning how to make healthy choices. California school districts have been on the leading edge when it comes to implementing nutritional standards in school. One of these schools is Chula Vista Elementary. Sharon Hillage, the school's nutrition teacher, talks to us about why they needed the wellness policy. I've been a teacher in the school district for 37 years and one of the most compelling things that we have seen is that our children have gotten more and more unhealthy, their weights, much more sedentary. The amounts of food that they tend to eat is out of proportion with the amount of activity. And so part of the concern was what we were feeding our students, quality of food. We started to look at how we could make changes in actually types and, and portions of what was being served. And I know throughout the country that has also been an, a, of national concern because we are seeing an epidemic of obesity with our young people. And if we continue the way we are progressing, we have the potential that our kids will live less, fewer years than adults by about five years. The prediction is five years less uh, than their, their parents. California schools are able to provide a more farm-to-table nutrition program due to its wide range of crops. Many schools across the nation have modeled themselves on the California nutrition standards. Eight states and 2,500 miles across the nation, Mountain Shores High School in Norton Shores, Michigan, makes it a requirement for all students to take a certain food item to make it a balanced meal. One of those components must be a fruit or vegetable. Karen Elam, the school's food director, lets us know where the school stands in terms of nutrition. I'm proud of the food that we serve. It's nutritious, it's tasty. We try really hard to get food that the kids will like to eat. Although there's limits by the USDA, sometimes our, our hands are tied a little bit on what we can serve, but we try really hard to serve food that the kids like. There's limits on calories and fat. The snacks were the biggest thing that was affected this year. A lot of the kids have seen changes in the serving size and also what's being served for fundraisers. We're required to offer certain things. The one thing that a kid has to walk away with is a half cup serving of fruit or vegetables. So there has to be three food groups on their plate basically. Um, and then they also have to take an apple or a scoop of vegetables. So I wish we could serve exactly what the kids want, but those rules are in place for a good reason, to try to keep kids healthy and teach them what's healthy. Whether it's the weather or the short growing season, Michigan is not able to provide many locally grown choices when it comes to fruits and vegetables as California schools. Both states, however, make sure that there are plenty of healthy options. Thanks to these people, school nutrition has gotten healthier. 90% of schools in the USA report that they are now meeting the updated nutrition standards according to the USDA. And with the National School Lunch Program in place, school children across the nation are learning how to make their own healthy choices when it comes to food.